Here's all I'm going to say about this. Angel Reese has helped out the women's game tremendously. And the fact we're even making this video should go to prove and it's a testimony at how big of an impact she has had on the women's game. So Caitlin Clark jumped the fence like Benny the Jet Rodriguez and got her licked back like it's a sand lot against LSU last night. And more importantly, Angel Reese and Haley Van Lith. And I got a lot to say about Haley Van Lith, and we'll get to that in just a second. And I almost made this video last night right after the game. I was like, all right, let's get this video uploaded. It's a hot topic. Let's talk about it now. But I decided to sleep on it because more times than not, my reactions right after the games, I'm talking about immediate reactions, they're not the greatest. And when I say my immediate reactions right after the games are not the greatest, I'm more so I'm talking about I'm very quick to judge and it's more so of based off of emotions, if that makes sense. My point isn't saying that as much as I wanted to make this video last night, I told myself, nope, I'm going to hold off. I'm going to sleep on it and we're going to make it tomorrow morning. And here we are. And of course, you guys, you won't be seeing this in the morning. You'll see it in the afternoon. I'm going to try to get it uploaded as early as possible. To start off this video, I want to make one thing astronomically clear. Matt is a professional women's sports hater. And even calling myself a hater might be stretching it, but I know some people would label as that. To me, they're just not interesting. And up until this season, I've only watched one women's college basketball game, and that was a championship game last year at LSU and Iowa. However, this year, I've watched more women's college basketball games in one year than I have my entire life combined. I've watched in total two and a half games. I watched half of the South Carolina LSU game in the regular season. I watched the Iowa versus West Virginia game. That was, what was it, only about a week ago. And then I watched the game last night. So two and a half. And it goes without being said, you know, I watch these games. I watched the two Iowa games because of Kalen Clark. And then I watched the South Carolina LSU game because I wanted to see undefeated South Carolina go up against Angel Reese. And I got to make this clear before we get into my next statement because it gives you all the context in the world. The reason I don't like watching women's sports just like nobody else does, and that's based on facts and analytics, is because women are slow, unathletic, and most of them ain't even that skilled or talented. And I could sit up here for the next two or three minutes and give you off more reasons just hating on them, but that's a long story short, and you get the point. Don't act brand new and don't try to act weird. You know why your boy Matt and other people out here don't like watching women's sports. I'm not going to overcomplicate it. I'm not going to be like all these sellouts on ESPN and try to sugarcoat it. I'm not about that. It's as simple as this. It's not fun to watch because they're not entertaining, and that's what it comes down to. And I've stated this previous years on the channel, but you couldn't pay me 10 20 or $30 to go to a WNBA game. I'd much rather do something else with my time. Going to a WNBA game or college game is that mundane and boring to me. For example, I'm an Alabama basketball fan, and if you were to say, well, Matt, I'll give you season tickets to the girls' college basketball games all year long, you can sit courtside, or if you don't want to take that, I'll give you $1, I'm taking the dollar. Now, and I know that was a lot, I say all that to say this. For the first time ever in my life, last night, I cleared my entire schedule to watch a women's college basketball game. And also for the first time in my life, I was excited to watch a women's college basketball game. I was genuinely looking forward to Caitlin Clark versus Angel Reese in LSU. I was. And you can say what you want about Caitlin Clark, you can say what you want about Angel Reese, but their antics off the court and what they do on the court it's been great for the women's game. And the way Angel Reese has acted last year and this year, she does have that brash personality, and it may rub people the wrong way, but to me, it doesn't bother me because it brings me in. It entices me. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some things she does from like, and eh, it's kind of a little cocky and arrogant, and you probably shouldn't do that. But the same can be said for Caitlin Clark. And matter of fact, I even tweeted it out a couple days ago. I think Caitlin Clark has been worse than Angel Reese this year. I didn't say she was acting worse than Angel Reese, but in that one game I watched against West Virginia, Kaylin Clark, she could not stop crying to the refs, and it was annoying to watch. As far as it goes for last night, Kaylin Clark wasn't crying to the refs near as much, not even one-eighth as much as she was in the West Virginia game. Yeah, there was a couple calls here and there where she was throwing her arms up at the refs, talking about, oh, you need to call this, call that, but wasn't too bad, and same thing for Angel Reese. But I tell you this much, I guess you'd label it as the character of Angel Reese and Kaylin Clark, that is what the college women's game and really any women's sports in general have been lacking. That is why people don't watch because you need people to act like Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, whether you like it or not. I've said it all the time. You can look at the analytics. It's something like 70% of the people that watch Alabama football games 
are rooting against Alabama. You need people in sports to be controversial. And in men's sports, you got that dang near every single day. You got villains and heroes all over the NBA, NFL, college basketball, and in college football. Well, with women's sports, and it's just natural at how they are, you don't really got a lot of villains, and that's not really in their element, and I understand that completely. And with Angel Reese and Kaitlyn Clark, you got that dynamic. You either really like them or you really don't. No in-betweens. While I say there's no in-betweens, I guess I'm being a hypocrite here, and I'm contradicting myself because I'm in the in-betweens. I'm in the middle ground. I don't really feel one way or another about Angel Reese or Caitlin Clark. I can't sit up here and say, oh yeah, I'm a fan of Angel Reese or Caitlin Clark when I don't even watch women's college basketball. So that'd be ludicrous for me to state. But here's what I can tell you. In the two games I have watched from Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, I've been entertained and that's all that matters. We'll talk more about Miss Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark at the end of this video. Let's talk about what happened last night in the game. And my biggest takeaway from the game isn't that Caitlin Clark went off for 40 points. It's that Haley Van Lith made single-handedly the worst decision of her life to leave Louisville and go to LSU. If you were to go to Google and type in what's an example of the grass isn't greener on the other side, there'd be a picture of Haley Van Lith in a Louisville uniform. Good gosh almighty, man. It's a night and day difference. And I know I say I don't watch women's college basketball games, so some people might try to say, well, Matt, how do you know she was really good at Louisville? Well, that's because I'm in the loop. I keep up with the stats a little bit, and I watch the highlights. I saw her play at Louisville, and she was a good player. I believe she averaged something like, what was it, 15, 16, 17 points per game without even looking it up? Matter of fact, I'm curious. Let's pull it up, why not, to give us a perspective here. All right, yeah, I got it pulled up right here at Louisville last year. She averaged what the... Oh, yeah, here it is. Oh, my God. 20 points per game. She, she averaged a 20 burger last year. That's insane compared to this year. This year, not only has her points per game dropped dramatically, but all of her stats have assists. And I know she's taken on a new role with the team. She's not shooting as much, but when she is shooting, she's not efficient. Worst field goal percentage of her career, under 38%. That's pretty bad. And I'm not going to hold y'all. I was keeping up with Van Lith dating back to last year because when she entered the transfer portal and went to LSU, I originally thought it wasn't going to work out in her favor because my immediate reaction was, I don't think she fits in with the Kim Mulkey and Angel Reese vibe in that entire program. But I was like, eh, what I know, maybe it works out. And as we've seen this year, it has not, and it's been a disaster. And here's what happened with Van Lith this year and in the tournament. She just simply got exposed, and she's not that good. She's an average basketball player. But the problem is, when she was at Louisville, she was a star player on a team that was decent. And saying Louisville's decent might be understating it. They was always a solid tournament team. But my point is, they weren't on LSU's level. They weren't on a national title contender's level. And since she was averaging 20 points per game, she thought, oh, well, I can just go to LSU and be on a national championship contending team and also be one of the better players on that team as well. But in the couple of games I watched at LSU this year and from the highlights I've seen, she's never looked comfortable in that LSU uniform. And I can read body language pretty well and you can just tell from looking at her, she's not happy and she knows she messed up. And I kind of felt bad for her at first, but then I thought about it, I was like, you know what? Nah, I don't feel bad for her. You wanted this, you wanted to leave Louisville, in which you was the main player, the star player, and go to LSU and get you a cupcake championship because you thought it was going to be an easier path on a way better team. You made your bet, and guess what? You got to lay in it, and that's what happened this year for Haley Van Lith, and she just straight up got exposed. And not only, we haven't even talked about this. I got to bring this up. Her defense, oh my goodness. I'm not even talking about against Kaitlyn Clark, against anybody. She's awful. She is slow unathletic as far as it goes for the game itself i know i haven't talked about it too much but it's relatively simple kaylin clark she just lit up van lith and that's all she wrote i know angel reese didn't have the greatest game seven for 21 from the field 17 points but i thought she did her part we know what angel reese is she isn't some extremely talented skilled player like kaylin clark she's just tall i mean come on now let's be serious when's the last time you've ever seen angel reese do a crossover into a mid-range or just do anything that's outside of catching the ball in the post and throwing it up. I'm looking at some of these comments people are saying about Haley Van Lith. They're crazy. One says, Haley Van Lith, I hope you know how to drive a forklift, buddy. <laughs> she a literal cone on defense. Yeah, she's just a defense, a liability. Getting that out of the way, and oh yeah, I meant to address this. That Flage Johnson girl, 
She can play, man. She can play. That's who Van Lith was supposed to be hooping like this year. The Fly J. Johnson girl, though, she impressed me because she hooping like a dude out there. And I mean that in the most respectful way possible. Some of the moves she's pulling off, especially that spin move she pulled off before halftime, I was like, oh my goodness. She was nasty. Now, the last thing we're going to address here is a, you know, controversial thing at the end of the game. Angel Reese, she went up here at the podium and was talking about how she's been criticized and quote unquote, I just want everyone to know that I'm still human and then Flaugier Johnson took up for him. Now to me, here's how I view this. Reminder, I've only watched two LSU basketball games this year and I don't keep up with Angel Reese that much. Yeah, I see some highlights and some stuff about her on social media here and there. And I know they talk crazy after the games, but outside of that, don't keep up with them. And I'm not gonna say too much about this just due to I don't know all the context behind what Angel Reese has been going through this year. And also I don't really know what question was asked here because this entire quote and whatnot, it could be taken out of context. But here's what I do know. You do have people on Twitter saying, oh, well, she was a big bad wolf when she was winning, but then they lose and she's playing the sympathy card. Here's all I'm gonna say about this. Angel Reese has helped out the women's game tremendously. And the fact we're even making this video should go to prove and it's a testimony at how big of an impact she has had on the women's game. Sure, she's controversial, polarizing, but the fact you even got people tweeting stuff out like this, it goes to show, like I stated, the impact she's had. And the reason I was so drawn into the game last night is because Kaylin Clark, she's absurd, insanely talented, and Angel Reese, she's an attention getter. There's many more things I could say, but I'm gonna end off the video with this. Shout out to Angel Reese and Kaylin Clark because if they weren't playing in the game last night, I would have been watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. But the